हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू वी एल एस आई अकेडमी दिस इज लेक्चर थर्टी वन एंड दिस वीडियो इज ए थर्ड पार्ट वीडियो ऑफ क्लॉक गेटिंग चेक्स इन फर्स्ट वीडियो वी अंडरस्टूड वट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ क्लॉक गेटिंग चेक्स एंड वी ऑल्सो अंडरस्टूड हाउ टू इवेल्यूएट एक्टिव हाई क्लॉक गेटिंग चेक्स हाउ एवर देयर वॉज अ प्रॉब्लम इन द क्लॉक सेंस एंड देन वी डिस्कस्ड दैट प्रॉब्लम इन द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो ऑल राइट लेट एस गेट स्टार्टेड फर्स्ट लेट एस डू द क्विक रिकैप ऑफ द प्रीवियस वीडियो In case if you want to understand in detail, then link of first and second part of the video is given in the description below, or you can find the same by clicking on the top right button in the video. In previous video, we explained that why your sense of clock pin of flop should be different. We also understood through waveform that your gating pin should change during inactive period of the clock. In active high type of clock gating check, the gating signal was changing when clock was low because AND and NAND gate will clamp the data when one of the input is low. Now let us see active low clock gating checks. By definition, active low clock gating check validates that the rising edge of the gating signal arrives at the active portion of the clock. That is when it is high for a positive edge triggered logic. And when one of the signal is high, the other signal will be blocked. Hence, when the gating signal is high, at that time the clock cannot go through and it's get it gets gated. hence the clock can only go through when the gating signal is low and hence the name of the check is active low clock gating check in the waveform below you can see that mclk is the clock which is launching the data for gating signal so once the gating signal is launched the gating signal is allowed to change in the first half so when your period is 8 nanoseconds for a clock signal we are saying that in the first half when the clock is high at that time only your gating signal should change so in this case the gating signal is should be allowed to change between 0 to 4 nanoseconds then only your timing is correct otherwise it it might not meet so now let us see with respect to the timing report how does it look like so below here we have timing report along with circuit and the waveform you can see that start point is udff0 so uff dff0 is this start point and we have the timing path ending at uor1 so your timing path will be starting from this flop and it will end at gating pin of uor1 let's see in the detail so this is your clock which is launching the data so your clock will be mclk which starts at 0 and then it goes as input of this clock so this flop udff0 slash mc slash this ck pin will be the start point of the clock so udff0 slash ck is the start point and then we have q pin that means output so clock to q delay that is your propagation delay of flip flop that is 0.13 and then it hits the a1 pin of UOR1 provided we are assuming that there is no combo here but it might be possible that there is some combo here so if there is some combo then combo delay will also get into the picture otherwise it is getting directly hitting the a1 pin so that means you have data arrival time of 0.13 since only we have one flip flop and propagation delay of it is 0.13 unit here so data arrival time becomes 0.13 in this case and then we have this requirement that your sclk that is your clock signal this should remain high only then gating signal is allowed to change so your this 4 nanosecond is the limit in which your gating signal can change so you have hard limit here so it becomes your 4 nanosecond becomes your a requirement here so you have only 0 to 4 so you will set set up at 4 nanosecond so that is why we have 4 nanosecond here and then source latency is in this case we have assuming that there is no source latency so it is zero that is why you have only 4 nanosecond of requirement that is your data required time so when you calculate the slack it will be 4 minus 0.13 that is 3.87 so that is how you will check the timing of clock gating check in the case of active low clock gating checks the whole check for active low type of clock gating checks is very easy since and launch and capture both are checked at the same edge you can pause the video and try to figure out at which edge the hold will be checked 
You can put your answer in the comment section. Now below is the hold timing report. Now we know that hold check is the minimum requirement for a data path. This check ensures that the gating signal changes only after the rising edge of the clock signal, which in this case is 0 nanoseconds. Hence, if your answer in the comments is 0, you are correct. Now in this report, you can see that data arrival time will not change and it will be same as in the case of setup timing report that is 0 0.13 nanoseconds, which is nothing but the propagation delay of the flip-flop and then it was hitting the enable pin of the clock gate and then we have capture clock path that is required time here and that is zero because we are checking the hold at zero and the other practical aspects are not considered so it will be clock getting hold time and other clock latencies that are zero but this line makes the indication that we are checking the hold at zero this one hence in this case, you can see that your data arrival time should be greater than zero and that is greater than zero. Hence, your timing is meeting. That's all for this video. We will come up with more concepts in further videos. Till then, please share this video as much as you can. Give your feedback in the comment section and please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.